I'm Lauren with IndoorGardening.com and today we're going to talk about how to care for a Monstera deliciosa. Monstera deliciosa are very easy care houseplants. They get very, very large. Leaves have measured over two feet wide on these plants, so they are not always going to be the little teeny tiny plants you find in the grocery store and bring home. They get massive. They also get fenestrations. They don't stay these simple little heart-shaped leaves. So let's talk about watering for these plants. Depending on where they are in their journey and how mature they are, when they're younger, they want a lot more water more often. They don't like to dry out too much. But as they mature and the bigger they get, especially after they start putting off aerial roots, they will need less water and you want to let them dry out. So it's the in-between here that a lot of people have trouble with. They go from these beautiful little heart-shaped plants and then switching over to this more mature plant where it starts to fenestrate and whatnot, wants to dry out more often. That's where people end up having a lot of trouble. After it starts developing aerial roots, it wants to have aeration. It wants to be able to breathe. It doesn't need that extra humidity around the root bases trying to establish aerial roots. So you want to make sure that you're watering it often but not too much and you want it to dry out in between waterings as soon as it's done being that little seedling. As far as lighting goes for Monstera deliciosa, they want as much light as possible. They are from down south, they are from the tropical rainforest, they get a lot more light than we could ever provide in our homes. Unless you have big nine foot high windows and you're shoving that plant in a southern nine foot high window right up against the glass, that, that would be too much light for it. They're definitely going to be wanting as much light as possible. They like bright indirect light, they want that to grow, they need that. They're going to be big monster plants, so they need as much light as they can possibly get. If you are giving them too much light, you will notice the edges starting to crinkle a little bit. You will notice little burn brown spots on there on the foliage, and that's when you know you need to pull it back a little bit. Um, but if you notice any burning, you can just move your plant. It, it's not that big a deal. Um, Monstera are very, very quick growers. They will recover quickly and they will continue on and they will still give you beautiful leaves. It's not going to be a detriment to the plant. It's not really going to slow down its growth that much either. Monstera deliciosa come from tropical rainforests. This means that they are used to a higher humidity. If you want them to get bigger more quickly, then give them a higher humidity. Ideally, they like to be anywhere between 40% and 75% humidity. Higher than that, you can have a little bit of issues depending on the maturity of the plant, especially in a houseplant setting where there's not as much airflow going on. Um, airflow is a very big thing with Monstera. They can rot if they don't have enough airflow. So that's another reason why you wanna let them dry out in between waterings. And if you give them a higher humidity, make sure that there is a fan in there as well. With their big leaves, they are more likely to catch some type of bacterial or fungal spores. And if there isn't aeration, then it can stay on the foliage. So that's another big thing. Make sure that if you're giving them a high humidity, anything over 75%, you definitely have good airflow. Uh, they can handle as low as 20% though. So if you are in a drier environment, looking for a house plant that's gonna still grow, still be happy in that environment, this plant will be able to do that for you. It's not going to grow as quickly because humidity always speeds up growth with plants, um, but it is still going to survive. It's still going to grow. These are very voracious plants. They get very large for you and they don't stop growing. So they have very little stands in their way, honestly. Speaking of their tremendous growth, because they grow so much so quickly, they are heavy feeders. They need a lot of fertilization. Um, you just get a standard NPK fertilizer, like a 101010 or a 111 or whatever. They just need an even amount and they need it quite frequently, honestly. So Follow the directions on your packaging, that is on your fertilizer packaging. Make sure that you stay on top of it. Every fertilizer will have different requirements. So depending on whether it's a chemical fertilizer, whether it's one that's distributed in your water or it's got the little uh, slow release over three months, just depends on what you're using, what type of fertilizer. Um, but make sure that you are fertilizing these plants regularly. So that way they're getting as much nutrients as possible, especially when they're younger, you want them to grow and put out their big fenestrated 
leaves. And part of doing that is having the vitamins and nutrients. Light is what actually feeds the plant and gives them the energy, enables them to do all of these processes. But the fertilizer is basically the vitamins that are going to help them to grow better. So you definitely want to make sure that you are getting all that in there for them. This plant is a climbing plant. It's a hemiepiphytic plant. It wants to climb. It wants to go crazy. In a houseplant setting, majority of the time, we get a houseplant, we set it on a shelf or on a bookshelf or something, and then we just let it sit there. But with Monstera, they are going to want to climb. So if you don't give them something to climb, they are going to go searching for it. They will go and try to climb your walls. They will try to climb your bookshelves. They will sprawl across everything on the floor if they don't get something to climb because they are searching for that thing to climb. They are used to having trees all around them and they're just gonna sprawl until they find a tree, essentially. If you want to keep them in check, definitely start pinning them up on a pole or you can do some type of a board. Um, lots of people like to put them up against the walls. Just keep in mind if you put them up against the walls, they are more likely to do a little bit of damage to um, your plaster or whatever because they have very strong arrow roots. Their arrow roots were used as ropes at one point. That's how strong they are. So definitely keep that in mind. They will be damaging your walls if you do put them on there. Another thing to note, because they are climbing plants, a lot of houseplant owners want these leaves to fenestrate, and the way to do that is to give them something to climb. Basically, if they're spending all of their energy just trying to search out for their basic needs, then they're not going to be spending their energy on actually maturing. So that's the big thing. Fenestrations are the little slits in the leaves that naturally happen. They're supposed to happen as the plant matures. The theory behind this is that as they mature, they grow up into the higher treetops and they have to be able to withstand higher wind forces. And this makes them less resistant to wind if they have the slits and the wind can just go through them. There is another theory out there that Monstera have the fenestrations in their foliage because it allows water to get through down to their aerial roots and down to their base. So there's a lot of different working theories. Regardless, houseplant lovers love to see the fenestration. So in order to get these fenestrations, you just need to be able to let your plant mature and help them mature faster by meeting their basic needs and giving them something to climb. So let's talk about what these plants want to grow in. They are hemiepiphytic plants, so they don't need a lot of soil as they mature. When they are younger, they like to have something that is very moisture retentive, something like a peat-based potting mix with some perlite. Um, but as they get more mature and they need less and less from those actual roots and they're getting more from their aerial roots, they prefer a more airy mix, something along the lines of sphagnum moss, bark and perlite all mixed together in one. You could also do a 50% perlite and 50% potting mix. That'll work as well for you. They do prefer something with the bark and the sphagnum just because the pH balance is a little different in there, um, but they can still do really well. These plants are definitely survivors. They're now invasive in certain locations, so they're going to thrive no matter what you put them in. They'll just thrive a little bit better and mature a little bit faster if they're in a more airy potting mix and you'll have less rotting concerns. The one question that everybody wants to know when they find a plant they love, how do I make more of it? How do I propagate this plant? Monstera deliciosa is a very easy plant to propagate. They basically just need some sort of node. So as long as you have a node on your plant, you can chop it a little bit under that node, put it in water, you can put it in sphagnum, you can put it in perlite, some people have put it in soil. It just depends on what your preference is. Another way that you can propagate this plant is if you get it to produce any kind of fruit, then you can have that fruit end up drying out and take those seeds, you re-soak them, and then you can plant them in your media of choice, and it will grow whole new monstera plants as well. Monstera deliciosa are very prolific growers. They're very, very easy care, useful for a lot of different things historically. Now they are useful for beautiful, amazing houseplants as well. So definitely hope you enjoy them. Hope this helps you take care of them a little bit better and helps you get those fenestrated leaves a little bit faster. Don't forget to check out indoorgardening.com for more information and we are always happy to help. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.